Anointing killer number three, worthless men. This is actually a line in the Bible, worthless men. It's a whole category. Right? If you've not seen these guys, um, when we're done, uh, just go to a grocery store. They're wearing a mask. They're wearing their pajamas. They're in their 30s and they're voting for socialists. Now, Judges chapter two says, the people serve the Lord all the days of Joshua. Again, everything rises or falls with anointed leadership. Joshua is an anointed, differentiated leader. He calls the shots, he takes the shots. As long as he is in leadership, the anointing flow of God's grace and the presence of the Holy Spirit flows down on the people and blesses the nation. And Joshua died at the age of 110 years. There arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord. They're like, oh, there's a God? We, no, we didn't hear about that in school. They did not know the Lord or the work that he had done. You, know, you don't know that your great grandpa was a slave and then God did a miracle and parted a sea and sent him you know, manna every morning to sustain his life and gave us this land as a gift. Nobody told us. And the people did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Again, they did what was right in their own eyes, which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And they served the Baals, the demon gods. And they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods, demons from among the gods, the demons of the peoples who were around them. And they provoked the Lord to anger. God got angry. They say every once in a while, there's a, there's a really like an even jellyfish with no vertebrae. These are the Christians who are like, oh, you can't get upset. Yeah, sure, God gets upset. Now, God's anger is not untethered and unholy. But at certain points, if you don't feel your blood rising, then you may be devoid of the spirit. And what we see here is that the men had failed. Let me explain to you how civilizations are built. Number one, we read Genesis, God made the world, and then he made a man. Biological, anatomical, male. Okay, if you're already triggered, it's gonna get worse. Okay? Heterosexual, male. Everything rises and falls with the men. God anoints the man to be a leader. God then gives him, for marriage, a Woman, anatomical, biological, physical, sexual, female. Binary, male, female. They get married. The two become one flesh. They consummate their covenant. Next thing you know, they have a child. N not tissue, a person. Okay? And now that we call a family. And for a civilization, the cornerstone is the family. And if you have a bad cornerstone that crumbles or a crooked cornerstone that is poorly laid, eventually everything built on top of it falls. It crumbles, it craters. That's how we get civilizations. Civilizations begin with men. Men not being worthless, but being anointed. And then loving their wife and raising their kids so that the legacy of faith continues from generation to generation. If you don't know how to do that, man, I'll see you at Real Men this week. But what happened in their day, this was the beginning of cancel culture. Baal is the demon god of cancel culture. And what Baal decided was, we're gonna cancel God in the nation. So there's a whole generation that rises up and they're like, nobody said anything, there's a God? And he's done stuff for our family? Never even heard of him. Let me say this, men. Every child should have their father as their pastor. Okay? If you are a dad, you're also a pastor. Yeah. You want to teach your child about the Lord. You want to have worship with your kid, read the Bible with your kid, pray with your kid, evangelize your kid. We're here to love and serve your kids. But honestly, my first responsibility, get the men to stand up straight and take their responsibility. That's my first responsibility. And so what I like to say is we build men up to bless women and children. I, I, I've yet to meet a truly godly woman that is like, man, my husband is anointed and leads and prays with the kids and loves me and wants us to honor God and our marriage is really deteriorating. I've never, I've never had that conversation. 
And let me say this, men, as we raise our kids, and this applies to mothers as well, but I'm speaking first and foremost to the fathers as head of household. They need to know the scriptures and your testimony. Amen. They need to know the word of God, but also your testimony. Again, this was their family history. Your great, great grandpa was a slave and God delivered him. Uh, your family was walking around the woods and God fed them. Tell them the story of what God delivered you from, what he's done in your life, what he's done in your parents' life so that your children just don't think this is an old book about an absent God. It's a living book and that God is still active in your family and this is the God of your family and the name of the God of your family is Jesus Christ. Amen. Make it proud and loud. Howdy, Pastor Mark here. Thanks for viewing the clip and if you'd like the entire sermon, we've got it ready to go. 